Kore te Fano, Tena Koto i Tena i Ata. Kotu ti Fokuma Toku i Moa. He fai taki wātanga o he matare huvoki. So my name is Timothy Fokuma. I am autistic and I am vision impaired. On behalf of Te Ao Fai Kaha or Kirikiriroa, the disabled community of Kirikiriroa Hamilton, I welcome you all to this valuable and valued career. Just a note before I start, I'm not going to go into in-depth with specific cases and statistics just due to time, but feel free to chat with me afterwards. I am a disabled activist and have worked in the disability sector for over 10 years. I would like to briefly share with you my insights into this world. When I first started out on this journey, my goal was and is simple to ensure that the abuse that happened to me as a young person doesn't happen to anyone else. My story has been told before, and I'm sure it will resonate with many people in this room. Today, I use my suffering as strength to encourage our diverse communities to come together and realize our potential. Unity is strength amidst harsh times. In 2020's New Zealand, our Tangata Fai Triki Wātanga, that's the neurodiverse community, are still kept in cages under lock and key. No respect given to their needs, no consultation with their peers and advocates. Need I mention Ashley Peacock's case? If you don't know Ashley Peacock, you can Google. Um, can you believe that it is still legal in this country to pay a disabled person less than the minimum wage based on their productivity, even if they produce more than their non-disabled counterparts? Excuse me, can I, can I repeat that? Because I want to record. Yes, okay. Can you believe it is still legal in this country to pay a, pay a disabled person less than the minimum wage based on their productivity even if they produce more than their non-disabled counterparts. And that happens on a daily basis in this country. I am one of the lucky ones. Even still, at any point, I can have my rights taken away from me due to my diagnoses. One person only need de my cognition to be impaired and bam, I'm locked up in a cell for years, heavily medicated against my will. And uh, you can read the Mental Health Act, particularly Section 4, give you a bit of information around that. Okay. I must be real with this. But this reality comes not from fear, but from a place of love for my people and for all people. Our struggles are valid, and we must be respectful to all who are struggling in their diverse circumstances. Our struggles are shared, and together we can advocate for change. I can't name a single fellow disabled or neurodiverse person who doesn't have mental health issues, often relating to how they have been treated as a disabled or neurodiverse person. Disabled parents having their children taken away because they are unable or unfit to care for their child, as opposed to what can we do to ensure this parent is able to care for their child? The stigma around having a disabled child, just as much a worry. The answers do not lie solely in government matters, because we have proven to the government that we can and are doing things by and for ourselves. And afterwards, if you want to chat with me about the various trusts that we've set up around neurodiversity in this country, that's a really good example. It is time that the government stands up, listens to us, but most importantly includes us. We are as much Aotearoa as anyone else, and we're not going anywhere. Kia kaha e te whanau. I'll now pass the floor to my good friend, Mr. Tyrone Cook, who will share with us a bit of a personal story 
and afterwards will be available for some sort of questions and just be courteous of our needs. TNI folks are Sure. Just, yes, right. okay. we, uh, we don't have the microphone available, do we? Okay, so just listen very carefully to Tyrone because his voice is on the channel I've just made up. Yeah. So, that's all. Thank you. I'll give you mine. Yeah. That's, where I put, that's where I put most of the stuff up anyway. I'll just give you mine. Just send me an email. Funding to match my needs 
For example, I am high needs, therefore my funding should match that requirement. Buildings to be required to be accessible again, and for needs assessments to cater for those like me that don't fit their criteria. For example, I had a recent NASC assessment last year and there was a question on anxiety level and the options were none, mild, moderate or incapacitated. I am none of those, I am severe, but because that was not an option on the form, as according to them, I don't have to worry about anxiety because there's no box for me on the form. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for listening to my lived experiences as a person with a disability and thank you for coming.